Ladies and gentlemen, from your right, the Balbo. Named after Italian fascist marshal of the Royal Air Force, that is the Regia Aeronautica, as the, it was known. He began rebuilding the Air Force in 1926 and was famous for mass formation flying. fascist and he actually opposed the anti-Jewish legislation in Italy. As I said he was famous for mass formations and he actually led a mass formation of 24 flying boats all the way across the Atlantic to uh, South America and then later on repeated that feat with a similar number of aircraft going to Chicago. He, uh, as I said, was responsible for building up the Italian Air Force to that which it was at the outbreak of World War II. Unfortunately, he died on the 28th of June 1940. His uh, Savoia bomber, SM-79, a, a tri-engine bomber, it was coming in to land at Tobruk, but unfortunately the Allies had just bombed Tobruk and the gunners were a little bit active and actually shot him down. So. There goes Italo Balbo. But the formation here is very well practiced. It's worked out meticulously. Everybody walks through the routine. We did that up there just after the briefing. Led today by the Avenger. We have uh, two P-40s there, two Mustangs, and the Spitfire. Henderson, the two Mustangs, Beastie, Jason Easthope, Boris Becker, the two P-40s, Doug Hamilton, Paul Bennett, and the Spitfire flown by Ben Lappin. Nothing like the sound of five V-12s and a radial out the front, that is just so magnificent. Gordon Glynn, my good mate, would have loved it. He loved the sound of round. No, it was just beautiful. formations putting them together they did that out in the hole and of course the larger the formation the most difficult part is actually pulling it apart here it's a little bit more simple with a smaller number of machines as you can see the two elements have actually separated out the uh, the rear formation has pulled back we'll see another fly pass through here and uh, then the elements should start breaking off into individual aircraft which will come back and land. It's quite a bit of work for the pilot on the inside of the turn because they have to push the aircraft down and pull the power back to stay in formation as the aircraft rolls into the turn. As they roll out, you'll see here the aircraft on the right hand side, they're going to be powering up to get the aircraft back up into position. So it can actually be a fair bit of work as a wingman in these displays. Well, if you think about it, simplifying it, if you have three cars abreast on a road and you go to go around a sharp a co a curve the other people on the outside have to go quicker to catch up with the guy on the inside subsequently if you've got a guy that's really fast on the outside the inside guy has to slow down Now the Vic, uh, the formations you see there, the aircraft, the three aircraft are in Vic formation. That was a pretty common formation for aircraft when they took off and went into battle for a fighter aircraft. But very quickly, as soon as they met the enemy, it would just turn into an absolute basket case. And it was a lot of the time in the early days, every man for himself uh, until the fight went all the way down to the deck. So very pretty the time, but as soon as they hit combat, all of that would change. End up with a big furball. A big furball indeed.
There is uh, many, many, many years of work have gone into restoring those aircraft to such beautiful condition. The maintenance required is substantial. And um, as we talked about earlier on, trying to get the spare parts, the guys that are responsible for that, I'll talk about 100 Squadron, the logistics of getting those things is just incredible. Where do you find a main bearing for a supercharger? Where do you find that? Where do you find pistons? It's fortunate that there are some companies like Roush in the USA who are manufacturing pistons because they manufactured uh, race pistons for uh, for race cars, NASCAR and what have you. Um, Avia in um, Europe, they they manufactured aircraft in World War II and before. They're now manufacturing new P-51 uh, props. So there are places where you can get these things. You can actually manufacture new wheels. There was a uh, an F-82 twin Mustang, which required new wheels, and they had them uh, built. Obviously, not cheap, but you can do it. Here the lead formations coming past in in echelon formation and pitching out to land. This is a standard arrival procedure for fighter aircraft to this day. Basically turning at 90 degrees to the flight path. This is the way to put a maximum number of aircraft in a small area, right? And then get them to land in a hurry. Yeah, so we had a uh, recent red flag sortie in uh, Nevada uh, in the United States. So red flag is based at Nellis Air Force Base, home of the fighter pilot. And there were upwards of 60 aircraft landing one after the other for about 15, 20 minutes. It just never stopped. And it looks damn good too. Uh, it was very impressive. Pitch and break. You can see the two uh, elements have broken up. We'll have... Uh, the first, uh, sorry, the second element coming in very soon. They should uh, go to echelon again, then line astern, and they'll be breaking off. As you can see, the other aircraft are down to uh, down to the south. That aircraft that, is, that aircraft that has taken off is Boris. He's heading back home in the Mustang. The Avenger coming in to land now. And uh, Easty has uh, headed out to the hold as he has another mission to perform. And that was a slight variation in the pitch there. That when they pitch up and away, it's also known as a fan pitch. So for anyone who was nitpicking our commentary, that was a fan pitch. <laughs> You will receive a note. <laughs> you can see the Spitfire. It's uh, headed off back to Tamora, um, to the northern home of half of 100 Squadron. And if you go to Tamora, you can actually get a ticket to the museum and the museum includes the aircraft maintenance factory or the hangar it is just amazing you see all the spitfires pulled apart any aircraft they've got there if they're doing work on it you can go in a viewing gallery and have a look at what they're doing to all these and the volunteers down there are very very knowledgeable indeed they can answer virtually every question that you will have and of course if you line that up with a showcase day then you're able to see the aircraft flying down there there's not only the 100 squadron aircraft but also a lot of visiting aircraft friends of uh, Tamora Aviation Museum that come up from uh, Victoria or down from Brisbane and of course we have the big warbirds down under this year it was biannual but uh, COVID knocked that so we're having it again this year and that is a huge showcase of warbirds interspersed with a lot of current military aircraft flying. Uh, we're seeing the wing fold on the Avenger again. Just an amazing bit of 1940s technology.
You wonder what happens if you forget to unfold the wings. And that has actually happened. It happened to a US Navy Sky Raider pilot. He was on deployment to a carrier in the Mediterranean. They took off, went to Rome, had their time there, and then were leaving. On the carrier deck, there's somebody that tells you what to do everywhere, where to go, what to do, unfold your wings, fold your wings. Now he actually forgot to unfold them. And he was given clearance to take off, and he actually put the power to it. The aircraft actually got off the ground, and what alerted him to it was the shadow going over his face. <laughs> But it did actually get off the ground. That's written up in a book called The Flying Dump Truck. Now yeah, we have something special again here. We have the Yak 110, the 110. I'll hand over to you, Dan, because uh, you've been talking to Jeff, Jeff Bourbon, who is uh, flying the aircraft, and you've got his sequence down pat. So I'll hand over to you. Thanks very much, Ando. Uh, yeah, Jeff, uh, we saw him fly this morning in the Yak 110, and we're going to see him again. 